There's just something to be said for simple living. I treasure every moment that I spend at my cabins and always have. I grew up with all the modern conveniences, but I watched my dad surrender five days of his week to a job he didn't like so that we could afford all the luxuries of modern life. But then the moment he had earned time off, he'd haul the family to a cabin that had no luxuries at all, not even a toilet. Ironically, to this day, those are the most treasured memories of my childhood. I guess there's just a certain charm to roughing it. Now I could run pipes and pumps and wrap copper coils around everything to bring water to my sink and shower, but this little jug suits my needs just fine. The process can be made as simple or as costly as I'd like it to be. My water can be heated by the sun, the wood stove, or by gas, and gravity will never fail me. Now just because a guy goes to the woods doesn't mean he has to live like a caveman. <laughs> no, sir. I enjoy my creature comforts, but prefer to use my ingenuity rather than my income to accomplish them. And doing so offers me a certain degree of pride and independence that I never found in the costly lifestyle that I had been born into. Two projects that I couldn't be happier with are my composting toilet and my icebox. The toilet requires no water to function. It just utilizes the sawdust left over from my woodworking projects and I store it right here in the unit itself. On the ice box, by utilizing the cold temperatures that Mother Nature provides, I have free refrigeration for about five months of the year, and I don't have to go out in the cold to get my food. I like winter a lot more now than when I lived in the city. The onset of the cold weather became an expensive time of year when the thermostat got involved. And as the snow fell on the streets and buildings, it didn't make them any nicer to look at. For most, it was a nuisance. It slowed everybody down, and that put people on edge. But that type of lifestyle is behind me now, and I'm not looking back. I chose life in the slow lane, and this is where I'm gonna stay. I just got out of bed, which you can probably tell by looking at me. <laughs> but people are always asking me about the temperature of the cabin and how hard is it to heat and how well does it hold the heat and stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you something. And as you can see, I'm walking around barefoot. Okay. The floor is not cold. And that's from that bubble foil. There's only one layer of that little bubble foil stuff beneath the subfloor. It's tremendous. I, I know people can't believe it, but if you're building a cabin, just that bubble foil is the way to go. I haven't touched it yet. Like I said, I just got out of bed. So that's, that's how much fire I have in the stove. <laughs> I'll rake it around with my poker. See, there's barely enough a couple little coals in there. That's it. That's all I have in the stove. Okay. This is an old Shenandoah wood stove. It's not very pretty. It's just a steel box, but great performer. One of the best performing stoves I've ever had. I bought this stove about 30 years ago from a friend of mine for 50 bucks. It's a heck of a bargain. So I'm just sitting here this morning, kind of lost in thought, not rushing off anywhere. I just come in from outside, let Frankie do his business, get the bird feeders filled up, get the wood stove kicked up, and he's just chilling out. I was writing a few words in my journal, and it made me think back on the old days I always started my mornings with a good cup of coffee in my journal. And it was a nice way to 
start my morning off. So I was doing that this morning and, and I'm sitting here and I'm looking out the window and I've got the birds coming and going and there was a gray squirrel here and I got this beautiful sunrise on the horizon and it's just wonderful to be looking at that and just over the valley, beautiful sunrise. And I'm not looking over a whole bunch of rooftops. I grew up that way. I lived that lifestyle for a long time. We're surrounded by neighbors and here I'm not looking at rooftops and I'm not governed by all this restriction and it's pretty nice. I could not afford to live the other lifestyle. A lot of times people think it's the other way around where they dream of this kind of lifestyle but there's no way that I could go back to living that kind of lifestyle. It's too expensive. But anyway, I read a few pages. This is goes this uh, is the second cabin journal. The first one starts out when it was just a camper here and there's been some pretty interesting entries. This one is in 2015 and it comes up to the present day. But I was reading where I was doing the site work, laying out the pads for my little workshop and having stone delivered up at the front for the red building and getting that ready for the building delivery and uh, all the anticipation with that project and now I sit here and it's all done, you know? And I'm writing about the next step, my addition out here and finally get those darn solar panels up and a few other things and get the garden going. And that's what my journals are all about. They're all this steady forward progression where it's a dream and then it's a, a more of a solidified plan and then I manifest all of that and then it's done. And I look back on it. And it's really, really cool. But, oh, it's good. A half a teaspoon. This is fresh ground coffee, which is the way to have it. Done in the French press. A half a teaspoon of brown sugar and about a half a square of dark chocolate. Oh. <laughs> it's dessert in a cup. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did and you'd like to see more of The Cabin Life, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along with future updates. All the best to you, and God bless.